UFC 257, headlined by Poirier versus McGregor 2, the second time they fight. And the co-main event was Dan Hooker versus Michael Chandler. Now, let's start there. All four of these gentlemen are in the extremely stacked, lightweight division in the UFC. And by extremely stacked, I mean pound for pound, the toughest of any division within the UFC, probably in history. Like anyone in the top five, six, maybe even seven could be champion. Like tough, tough, tough division, the toughest division in the entire sport of mixed martial arts, let alone UFC. Michael Chandler was a champion in another league, Bellator. And Bellator, similar to 1FC and other MMA leagues that are not UFC, are considered the B leagues, quote unquote. You know, folks that were in the UFC wind up going to these other leagues, usually when they're kind of sort of past their prime or if they get cut from the UFC. And it's definitely not to say that you know, everyone from the UFC is better than everyone from Bellator or 1FC, et cetera, because it's definitely not the case. You have some dope fighters that are within those other organizations that just never went to the UFC. But Michael Chandler was one of these guys. He was a champion within Bellator, and he actually moved over to UFC. And he was making his debut in the light heavyweight division. Sorry, lightweight division. And as his opponent, Drew Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker set himself out of you know, all the guys that he could have faced, he was hoping it wasn't Dan Hooker for his debut because Dan Hooker is, has the style that normally does well against Michael Chandler. You know, he's he's tall, lanky, has a lot of reach. Dan Hooker is like more of like a, a shorter, compact, you know, power striker, but that's who he got. And then in the first round, in the best UFC debut ever, that's what the cool kids are calling it, Michael Chandler knocked out Dan Hooker, got a TKO KO victory in the very first round. Then in the main event, in the much anticipated return of Conor McGregor, because it's been a minute, his last fight was against Cowboy Cerrone, which lasted, I think, like 40 seconds and was like a year ago, against Dustin the Diamond Poirier. This is their second time going at it. The first time around, Conor knocked out Poirier, and many folks expected Something along the same lines. Dustin's obviously no slouch. He's at the very top of the division. I think he's ranked number one, maybe number two, but I'm pretty sure number one before this fight with Khabib, who has since retired, being the champion. And McGregor looked good in the first round. You know, he traded with Dustin. He looked poised. He looked sharp. He looked accurate. But Dustin was eating his shots. And in the second round, McGregor got clipped, got caught, and got TKO KO'd in the second round. Definitely hats off to Dustin Poirier for doing his thing. You know, once he gets someone up against the the cage, he just throws like a flurry of punches, a barrage of punches. I think my, Michael Chandler actually referenced that as well in his conversation with Brendan Schaub on Food Truck Diaries. And it's so true. If you look at Dustin's finishes, it's usually somebody against the cage that he's boxed up and then just throws like a street fighter level barrage of punches. Now, after this, you know, a lot of pundits and, and folks online were saying, is Connor done? Is he the same? Is he just rusty? Was it ring rust? You know, because he hasn't fought in a year or two. Is he losing it? Is he past his prime? Does he Is he too rich to fight? You know, a guy's worth over like $100 million, not just from the fight with Floyd Mayweather where he made bank in boxing, but his proper 12 whiskey is gaining a lot of market share, doing very well sponsoring boxing events and UFC events. And he's doing really well in that space. He has clothing line investments, et cetera, et cetera. He has two kids with a third on the way. So does he still have that same like fire, that same like want to fight? And I don't know. Who knows? Nobody's in, in Condor said. One thing I would say is that, you know, because a lot of people are saying that even before this fight, before the Cowboy fight, before the fight before that, you know, why is he fighting anymore? He has so much money. And it's like some people truly do love doing what they do. Like it's not for the money after a certain point. Like why did, why does LeBron still play basketball? Why did Kobe, why did Jordan? Like that can't be the only drive, right? Well, at least for, for some folks, like it's the passion for the sport. It's the competition, but who knows? These are all questions that only Connor can answer. Everybody else is just speculating myself included. 
it would suck though. It's like uh, like the end of an era, like what we saw with Ronda Rousey. You know, a couple fights past her prime, and you know every fighter that fights for too long, this eventually happens. So they start losing fights, don't look the same anymore, lose a, a bit of that like luster that they had. You know, the Anderson Silvas, Ronda Rousey's, Leota Machida's, every, everybody, and it sucks to see every single time. If that's the case, I hope not. For you know, just selfish reasons of you know ap- appreciating, like the fight weeks leading up to like a Conor event, and all the hoopla and stuff like that, which has obviously died down with with COVID and and spectacle wise, and also there wasn't like any like negativity or animosity uh, between Poirier and McGregor, which is like a lot of the fuel and a lot of his other fights. Maybe that has something to do with it. Who knows? But still, none of that should take away from the fact that Poirier did his thing. He's definitely at the top of the heap. It's it's going to be interesting to see how the top of the division shakes out now with McGregor having a loss, Khabib being retired, and apparently not coming back. Poirier at the top of the division. Dan Hooker just lost. Michael Chandler just came into the UFC and has a spectacular win. Justin Gaethje has to be part of the conversation. Oliveira as well. Tony Ferguson, I think should be, but folks aren't mentioning him. I'm not sure why. Maybe I missed something on him. But yeah, besides those two matches, uh, it was a fairly uneventful card from my perspective. But that's what I got for you folks on UFC 257. Super Bowl. 